It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ah, it's Feedback Friday, and I'm kind of stoked for this Feedback Friday. Um, first of all, before I go on, commenter, you are right. Hieronymus Bosch was Dutch. It's in the Spanish Museum. Thank you for that. I love when people know this stuff. It's very, very exciting. Um, the comments this week... This may be condescending, but I'm so proud of you guys. It was very emotionally charged content. And yet there was honesty and authenticity and an amount of trust that made me happy. And there were a lot of comments. And so my brain is swimming with stuff right now um and i managed to piss off elon musk's psych offense so uh <laughs> their arguments were not cogent but you know i sort of knew what i was doing there there's no point we'll just move on that was that was content because i didn't have the video i wanted to do on wednesday done so pfft, done um but uh yeah i want to talk about monday's video um because I care that men don't feel cared about. That is weird. And what's the point of saying that? Um, one one thing I've um, heard about, weird thing about me when I do one-on-one uh, -on -one client sessions, I have all these different color pens that I use. There's like blue pens and purple pens and magenta pens and... And I'm going to drop my clipboard. But, like, there's all these color pens. And this was a big red pen week. Uh, when your peer counselor has synesthesia. Uh, I write with different colors based on emotions and stuff like that. Part of it is so when I track my notes, it's like, where's that part where it was very red? Okay, right there. Makes it easier to find. But it's also, like, it's my way of connecting and engaging and being empathetic also the writing looks like the right color um but there was a lot of these suckers this week and um you can fill in the blanks about what that there was some green as well we don't get green much but there was some green um a lot of purple too and purple's my favorite color for the reason it's like high level, cool, creative shit like that. Um, and so I am going to launch in and just see where this goes in the spirit of gratitude. Because considering the subject matter uh, and the feelings expressed, I'm honored that people bothered to comment at all for all the saying that you think no one gives a shit I think you think I care enough to read your comment that means something is working right okay let's go into this if you like this kind of thing help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash I have finally updated the patreon welcome page some I made a new video and I looked at it was kind of sad uh or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone can use it but can't afford it coffee.com slash Leanna K there was a really cool moment um where somebody did me a huge favor and I said you know can I give you a free free session or something like that I said thank you and he's like I can't accept anything like that so give someone else a free session and I'm like holy shit I love that I love this community I love you guys um so let's uh let's get in uh either jump to the end of this video when you get bored for an announcement or um or hang on till the end uh uh there's something actionable at the end god that sounds so stodgy anyway okay so one comment, this was actually a response to the comment, but I'm going to just, um, uh, one person said, I mean, we're outright told to shut up and go away when we share our feelings in most circles. Objectively, a large chunk of the world does not want to hear from men. Accurate statement. Response. 
That was my initial reaction, having Leanna phrase it as our assumptions starts off on the wrong foot. We have actual evidence to support our beliefs and calling it assumption just sidesteps that if she doesn't want to confront as if she doesn't want to confront the reality of it. I will note what I said, accurate statement, objectively, a large chunk of the world does not want to hear from men was not the assumption I talked about in the title of the video. The video was called, How Do Men Feel Heard If They Assume No One Cares? Large chunk of the world does not equal no one. Now, it's totally understandable that if you get enough rejection, you just get exhausted and can't keep getting the rejection. That's fair, but large chunk is not no one. And I will remind everyone that I was blacklisted from games journalism. Um, uh, board members of the IGDA have told me to get fucked and called me a disgrace to the industry. That was as uh, recently as last November. Um, it resulted in a pretty major dog pile, or it was part of a pretty major dog pile uh, on Twitter. And I did complain to the IGDA, and while they said it was rude and made him take it down, which I did not ask for, um, and and uh, when I said, hey, I didn't ask for that, they're like, well, you know, basically what you want doesn't matter. Um, but they didn't determine that that was inciting harassment which I don't agree with, but that is that is me saying this, not looking for sympathy. That is me saying, I understand rejection. I understand being an undesirable. And it's interesting because I'm reading a lot of literature lately about how, gee, the boys are disappearing from the mental health system. And it's like, well, fucking shit assholes like of course they are you're crapping on video games you're crapping on anime boobs are evil all the things they like when they're teenagers or in a state of a teenager mindset my inner teenager is very active a lot of the time my inner kid is active a lot of the time that's what all this shit is um also it gives autistic people something to look at if they don't want to make eye contact on camera um I don't get it in the same way. I do get being an undesirable. And I mean, one of the things all the guidance says is stop shitting on stuff they like. And yet the gaming industry keeps shitting on stuff a certain type of guy likes. And, you know, one commenter said, and I'm, I know I'm I'm piling up the comments, but like I said, we're going to see how this goes. Um... Another commenter said, I think the problem most people had with psychologists being part of game development was the fact it came to light that they were there to get gamers to spend more money on microtransactions. And that's why it connects because, you know, psychologists are like, look, if you shit on the things they like, they're not going to trust you. I don't know why it's become this battle between, you know, waifus and real women Ideally, we have both and more. Uh, I made a joke after there being yet another, you know, link in bio porn bot on X. That's Twitter. Is like, can we please, like, if Elon Musk is going to let all these porn bots onto Twitter, can we please just, you know, uh, get some variety, some fluffy girls, some furry porn, like this you know, sun-damaged, obviously fake boobs, injectable filler in the lips. It's gotten boring, you know. Women are not offended by fantasy women in games. As long as the game is not going... Ew, you type of woman, you're gross. And that's exactly what guys are reacting to as well. And it's like, okay, there's all these fucking psychologists. There's take this and they're getting money from parts of the U.S. government. And all this. It's like, 
you guys are you guys know this stuff when and maybe that maybe these aren't clinical psychologists maybe these are researchers and that's the problem research psychologists are sometimes some of the most disagreeable people like they shouldn't be in this business types um I once tried to get the head of a prominent trauma clinic in in Chicago to be on the show and uh the response I got something about not <sighs> psychologists need a lot of notice for programs like way longer than media normally provides but I, I see you're trying to do something good here. It's like, you're a fucking psychologist and you're that condescending? <laughs> you know? Like, just... But I laugh about it because at this point, I'm so fucking used to it. And so, yeah. We've gone from games telling the average woman you suck to games telling the average man you suck this is a lateral move and actually no it's not a lateral move it leaves us some well I mean games are selling better than ever but that's just because gaming is normalized um beyond like below a certain age group kids grow up with video games of course they play it uh but the content in AAA, like consoles and PC games, a lot more men are still playing these games than women. So since, you know, I, I've been talking to a lot of other women who play games to make sure this is not just me. Um, and uh, we're not satisfied in the content we're getting. They're not appealing to us. And guys aren't, you know, guys, they like some things. They don't like other things. Certain guys. And, and, and I mean, no games for everyone. And not every game. Not any. No game should try to be for everyone. But as one commenter keeps saying, it should be for someone. And to me, the best way to do that is to make the game you want. Now, I understand in AAA they don't have that luxury. And yes, that is the thing about indie. With AAA, there's all these demographics and marketing and, you know, the money people tell you the straight jacket uh, in which you have to perform because you have to sell this many units except for apparently, you know, PlayStation who just goes, make cool shit. Uh, make something that will sell consoles. And so we get Spider-Man, God of War. Horizon Forbidden West apparently did really, really well. Um, good for them. Um, and, uh, you know, even The Last of Us 2 made money. So fine, we'll see what The Last of Us 3 does. Um, the Last of Us 3 is going to have to be spectacular spectacular I think to get people back because the last of us two made money based on you know the the love people had for the first one but um yeah it still made money and that's good like I want games to make money because that means we get more games I just want people to start listening to each other better and that's why that's what psychologists are supposed to help with no, it could be psychologists are saying a certain thing and devs are just panicking because of their own self-loathing. And I don't think it's any accident. I don't know if you saw the happiness indexes uh, that came out for 2024. Finland is the happiest country in the world. And Remedy made a game about how to you know get the intrusive thoughts out of your head go Finland <laughs> Finland's awesome you know 
Um, I still think Alan Wake 2 is the poster child for mature games. And because it comes from a mature framework of nobody has all the answers, people need to connect. By the time you hit a certain age, you're aware of how much you done fucked up in your life. And then, you know, the I know I'm far away from the mic. I'm just reaching for something that was bothering me. Um, I fidget when I think. Um, but... You know, the question is, okay, I've made a lot of fuck-ups in my life. Am I going to forgive myself and just do better going forward? Or am I going to destroy every relationship I still have, continuing to keep people at arm's length and beat, beat myself up? And that's why I make videos knowing things like, you know, assuming no one cares, I know I'm going to get some people going, no, I don't assume I know. And yeah, okay, now we've started the conversation. And that's where I can point out, I can validate you have experience with people not caring, people being cruel. I can validate that, right? Yeah, true. I believe you. Um, large portions of the industry seem to not care. Large portions of the world seem to not care. I mean, the world as an entity does not care. The world is a planet and not Mogo from the Green Lantern Corps. Um, but the idea that no one cares, you no, know, that is an assumption because you haven't met every person on the planet. And maybe no one cares right now. That doesn't mean no one will care ever. And this is when we get into the thorny subject of hope and how hope hurts when life hurts. You know, it is easy to say that all states are temporary. All emotional states are temporary. It's really hard to convince yourself of that when that temporary shitty emotional state has gone on for 20 years. Or, you know, it's not that you always feel epic terrible, but it seems to be the place you default to. And that's, everybody does have a baseline that without, you know, putting in or taking away, you return to. Because I have personal experience retraining that baseline. I, I used to be chronically depressed, uh, like all the time. Like if it was just kind of neutral doing nothing, I was depressed. And I managed to, to change that state. And I am drug resistant and my dopamine receptors shot, are shot. And I am... You know, uh, because I am very, I have the ginger uh, resistance to an aesthetic, sleep aids don't really work. Um, I'm, if I had to just do it the on hard mode. And that's why I say to anybody wholeheartedly, if medications help, please take them. I really would have had an easier go of it if medications helped me. Um, they don't work for everybody and, and certain medications don't work for certain people. And it can be incredibly frustrating. And I, I temporarily gave up a bunch of times. So I hear you. I still go through periods. I went through a period last weekend where I felt like no one cared. Notice I said I felt like no one cared. I know people care. And I know that if I'd swallowed my damn pride enough, um, I could have reached out and gone, hey, could someone care about me? But I was too much of an asshole. So I ended up losing my shit on the Discord. And then a few hours later, I apologized for losing my shit. Um, 
And that is how you find out people care about you because this one guy, ugh, this guy's awesome and he doesn't know how awesome he is. Um, but he's a real quiet guy and he doesn't contribute much, but it's one of those ones because, because he doesn't contribute much when, when he does, it, I'm extra happy. But he's like, no, I, I learned a lot from what you said. It was an interesting perspective. And I still knew I lost my shit and I still don't want to do it again. But it's like, that was, he didn't have to say that. He didn't have to be kind. And he was. And that's, you know, he bothered to care actively. And that's the only thing we can control is we can't make other people care about us. But we increase our chances of making those connections when we take the risk and care about other people. And uh, uh, it's not therapy this week. It's about making connections. And Bobby Calloway is the guest. So please, better with Bob on YouTube. Uh, it was a good interview. It was just fun. I've been trying to figure out how to get Bobby on. And, and that was that was the moment. Um, I'm singing. Um, but so let me get to another comment that also, because it feels like a double punch of both. Men's problems don't matter as much because men are inherently in a position of privilege. And the younger generations of men are too soft. Why can't we go back to the days where men were super thick-skinned and stoic? It's pretty much why I'm not a fan of the your problems don't matter because others have it worse mantra. And this is one thing that drives me crazy about the left is that we know don't compare traumas is something for a reason but ever since I was a kid, we've had some version of, oh, pipe down, there are starving children in Africa. That's what it was in uh, the 80s whenever a kid complained that parents could gaslight their children. I've talked about this before. Now it's, oh, you have privilege. And, you know, I I, I had that moment where I, I, I read the story about 50 game devs uh, convening outside of GDC to have a like a scream session about the state of the industry and I have never been to GDC because it would cost me five thousand dollars to get and stay there because I don't know anybody I can stay with in the area so I'd have to stay in an incredibly overpriced hotel and, you know, pay to go in and pay for the airfare, which from Canada is not cheap. Every single one of you there is privileged to have that access. And you're calling attention to yourself having a meltdown in a public space. You are primarily white and primarily male. And... um and cisgender male and um if a bunch of women were screaming in a park that would look very different if a bunch of black and latino people were using their shit were losing their shit in public a lot of those very same left-wing game devs would probably be internally terrified and the thing is i, I don't that is not, yes, that is an assumption, but again, like, that is an assumption based, well, I said probably, so it wasn't an assumption, it was a probability, um, and see, I'm checking myself, like, not every one of them would be terrified, and yes, there were some women there, but it's coded male, and there were men involved in the organization of it, and game dev is seen as this industry that's, you know, white and male, and so, you can go and you can scream in a public park. I don't know if they had a permit or not. Um, but, you know, 50, 50 black men show up in a public space and just start screaming. Yeah. And these are the moments where I'm like, are you fucking listening to yourself? This is why everyone's sick of this shit. And 
this is where we're at, right? We know the industry is doing a lot of things that are wrong from psychological best practices. You don't have to make one group of people feel like shit to make another group of people feel included. That is protest shit that isn't mental health best practices. And I mean, the we retooled the men's group stuff because the men that joined didn't want it to be men's only. They wanted it to be men's centered, but they didn't want no women there. So, you know, I listened. I'm not going to say, no, it has to be that. No, I'm going to freaking listen. It's for them. You know, there is no reason for me not to, you know, take a comment. Like, it's not an assumption that no one cares. I have evidence. It's like, well, large portions, yes, you have evidence that no one has cared. You, or no one has known how to show you caring. You don't know for certain that no one cares even the slightest. I mean, if I didn't care, why would I read that comment? You know, it, it wasn't to mock it. I, you know, I read it because I thought if this guy's thinking that, then other guys are thinking it. And let's separate fact from assumption here. I can work with a lot of people don't give a shit. I can work with, I'm overwhelmed by the rejection I've received. I can work with that. Those are all accurate. Those are fact, right? No one cares. I know that's not true because I have colleagues that work. You know, I, I talked to a guy uh, just yesterday that he was trying to get some men's mental health stuff going with his union and you know shit happened and he ended up feeling uh, you know completely unappreciated and you know all the work he put in and all that stuff and he cares you know and just because just because someone doesn't know you personally yes it isn't the same as someone really knowing you and still accepting you. Yes. But it is a beginning, you know. That's why I work very hard to validate the humanity, even of people I think are terrible. Matt Walsh is a real challenge. Matt Walsh is harder than J.K. Rowling for me. Um... Because I can't tell if he's just a complete grifter who knows exactly what he's doing or he's a frightened little boy that really does believe 51% of the shit he spews. And that potential that he is 51% a little boy who believes the shit he spews um, is, is how I register that that's a human. But, I mean, it was pretty great to see him try to, you know, pull a Milo and grift on the anti-sweet baby incorporated people and I like, noted fuck off you hate us but I mean holy shit the resilience that takes you know the conviction that takes to not you know take the performative oh I care now that's tough and I mean, I guess some of that is nobody cares because then you don't get conned. Yeah, you don't get taken. That's that's understandable. But at some point, you do start missing when someone does care because no one does care becomes no one's ever going to care. And no one's ever going to care becomes... No one can care about me. No one can care about me because I don't deserve to be cared about. Maybe everything these people are saying about me is true. And this is probably hitting some people hard because it's like, yeah, she's going through my neg negative self-talk. Right. I've had that spiral myself. Um, The way I, I got out of it doesn't work for most people because I went, okay, so no one cares. 
So what? You gotta lay down and die? No, I don't really want to do that. You know, okay. Um, people find you annoying. Okay, I'm gonna make annoying my superpower. I'm pretty good at being annoying. I can use my annoying powers for good. By the way, X-Men 97 is awesome. The first two episodes, so good. Um, so here's the thing I said. Um, stay tuned to the end. Where... I've talked to a few people about doing round tables or forums or something like that, not streamed at first because people need to be able to, to talk. And we're trying to figure out a structure um, for, for these discussions so people can feel heard and get, some support because you know it's it's the okay take your own advice like you know I can't control the world all I can control is me and ask people for help helping other people feel like somebody gives a little tiny shit you know just of the I may not know you but you have inherent value as a person as a starting point. And a lot of people don't believe that. I get that. They see themselves as instrumentalized. It's a marker of objectification. Um, one of the big mistakes gaming makes is what's called denial of subjectivity. You know, negating, gaslighting persons, a person's lived experience. It's, it is objectifying a person. And that's why I keep going, not all men think alike. Not all men want the same things. You know, the variety in what men actually want from themselves, from each other, from other people, from romantic partners. It's as diverse as there are men. And the gaming industry really has failed to incorporate that because a lot of the you know, American devs are focused on what people should want as opposed to working with what they do want. And then, well, there was this thing, this mantra where one of my TV mentors said is that people don't know what they want until you give it to them. And so you have to kind of play both angles of, okay, so you have Star-Lord as the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and then have all these other cool characters that people don't know they want, but by the time they get through the movie, it's like, I love that dude. Yeah, I want more of him. I love her. I want more of him. Fuck it. I am Groot, man. Rocket's awesome, right? Mantis, awesome. Great reimagining from the comics. So good. Um, Drax, great reimagining from the comics. Like James Gunn, that's what he does well. Suicide Squad, same way. Polka dot man. Polka dot man. Anyway, I'm digressing. But games is the same way. You have to balance what people think they want so they'll give your game a chance. And then what they want which is they don't know because a lot of people go through life on defense all the time and you can't score on defense you you have to play offense every once in a while but how does someone do that when they're smacked down made to feel terrible and then get told it's their fault because they have privilege and this is where, okay, you can go and take all the critical theory and all the sociology and all that stuff, but there's a reason that sociology models aren't used in clinical practice. They're, they're frameworks for observing and interpreting things, but that's large numbers of people. When it's individuals, all those assumptions go out the window. And you have to deal with someone as an individual. And 
the reason I am challenging people to not believe that just because they aren't aware that anyone has cared yet, please be open to the fact that someone could. Because if you're not, it doesn't matter how much someone cares about you. You're not going to see it and you're not going to feel it because you're not going to think it's possible. And I know it's hard. I know it's scary. And I know it hurts to be rejected and disappointed. We don't really have a lot of options. And I'm going to work very hard to make that gap smaller, make the risk smaller. Um, I've talked to some people about some podcasts that are sort of more contained with panelists who are willing to, you know, take a few knocks online, but, you know, do that and then do the kind of private discussion of, okay, you know, sanctity of the room of the space. Do not talk about, you know, what happened here. Um, this is a closed loop. Um, I learn a lot from the stuff people trust me enough to tell me. And again, even someone criticizing or making a negative assumption about me, like, you know, the, the negative assumption was as if she doesn't want to confront the reality of it. And I mean, that's not true. I had to confront that in myself that I didn't feel cared about and people weren't caring about me in a way that actually saw me and made me feel cared about. And that was a really difficult realization and changes had to be made. And I ended up there multiple times in my life. It wasn't a one and done. And that's why I started doing this because, yeah, I could rattle about games and piss people off and get, a, you know, thousands of views and all that stuff like I used to. But I'm, I, that's not that's not where my head's at. That's not where my heart is. Anybody can do that. And people care a lot more about what guys like Destiny and Hassan and all those other people say about games. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, I can do this. And I think I'm uniquely good at this. And so I'm going to do this because um, I don't want to be Destiny. Certainly don't want to be Hassan. Um, and, and, you know, some of the other, I just don't watch a lot of gaming YouTubers, I admit. There's another, there's some names I don't know how to pronounce. And so it's like, well, well, I'm going to sound stupid, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to confuse Spanish and Dutch again. Um, but yeah, um, Uh, but yeah, the, the ongoing chorus of, we don't assume we know that's a trap. All you know is that it, you are not aware of the people who care about you. That's real. That's valid. And the only thing you can do about that, tell the people in your lives that you care about, that you care about them. It's amazing what can happen. If you're not sharing that, why should anybody else? If you're just, nobody cares, so fuck them. Why shouldn't everybody else go, nobody cares, so fuck them? Because, yeah, you know what? It does hurt to be told, I'm just not prepared to confront it. No, I don't care. I don't, like, it is an invalidation. It is a rejection. Because if I didn't care... Why would I open myself up to this kind of rejection and abuse? It ain't for attention. Because if I wanted attention, like I said, I could just make hot takes on video games that drive everybody crazy. Right? It starts with you. You, you get what you give. Not all the time. But if you're not willing to take the risk to tell someone, hey, I give a shit. Where does it start? You can't go through life expecting other people's to go first. Somebody's got to make the first move.
Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for some of you but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Sign up for a Leanna Care session so we can work one-on-one. -on -one. It's the best way to hear someone gives a shit. Um, and uh, so coffee.com slash Leanna K. If you want to donate a give a shit session, uh, I almost switched from this to the same thing. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.